Hello everybody, welcome to the Buffalo Brotherhood, I'm Ryan, this is Fishing Planet, and I've just caught a flathead catfish here in North Carolina as we continue to roll along. Uh, we are on day two, we have another day to go. Um, still catching catfish. I uh, caught a couple there before I started recording, just to make sure I wanted to get to the next day and everything else uh we're there's uh the, the map essentially looks just like yesterday's so we have a peak time in the morning and a peak time in the evening so considering how we still have two another day after this day and i only have about 30 minutes left to my license or so before it expires we might play this one a little closer to vest and, and get through it a little faster uh make good money on day one uh enough i think to pretty much pay for the trip not 100 percent certain but Gonna be close. So now we're just icing here, just catching icing. Uh, I was really happy with the way day one worked out. We fished almost the whole entire day there. Got more than 100 pounds in the old keep net, uh, or fish fort, I guess, is the one we're using. I don't, I don't think we're gonna have. I don't have any aspirations of, of working that hard this day, though. So I don't. Let's take a look. Yep, heading towards the peak already, which is great. Thought I would try just one cast up here. Tension on that line. There it goes. Morning dove in the distance. Hope everybody's having a great day. Happy Wednesday to you all, if I've done my math correct. Uh, hope you guys are enjoying the summer weather. Little League, Little League baseball seasons are going to be wrapping up anytime soon. People's full-blown summers are going to be kicking off. Camping trips, family vacations, and so forth. Uh, as I've said on the last couple of videos, I'm actually on vacation right now. I'm pre-recording all of these things. Let's see, Wednesday, Wednesday, I think I'm at Walt Disney World in the Animal Kingdom. About the time this goes live. So, never been there before. Looking forward to it. Let's try one more cast over here. I'd love to go fishing down there, but not this trip. Doesn't even look like it's in the. Oh, we got a fish. I say it doesn't even look like it's in the water, but must be a crappie. So it's coming right in for the most part. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit so I can hear the oh smallmouth. Cool. Keep. All right, let's catch a catfish. alternate here between the two so I'm thinking um Movie-wise, is Wonder Woman out now? Wonder Woman may be out now by the time this video goes live. Uh, that's one that my daughter's going to want to see, I'm sure. My wife is going to want to see. Uh, we're big on the superhero movies at our house. We like those, so we do. It's a good time. Nice popcorn movie. Trying to think of some underrated movies. Movies that still need to be seen. 
funny movies maybe. Movies has been out a long time. For some reason I, my mind keeps going back to is it nothing left to lose or nothing to lose? It was Tim Robbins and Martin Martin Lawrence? Uh Tim Robbins is like a down on his luck business owner, his wife's leaving him or something, or having he caught her having an affair and he lost his job and Martin Lawrence is like uh is attempting to like steal his car. And then just general hijinks ensue from there. Just there's a, just one scene in that movie that gets me laughing every time. Tim Robbins gets a he catches his shoes on fire. He walks into a gas station and his shoes are still smoking. The gas station attendant looks at him and says, "Wow, you must be fast." <laughs> I don't know why, but that line. I guess because it's just there's that deadpan Norm Macdonald sort of delivery. It wasn't Norm Macdonald though, but I'm just. It just cracks me up. Really funny to me. I don't know. There's some other good movies. Comedies from the late nineties, early two thousands. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like I need my phone. Do a quick search. See if we can't come up with a list of movies. Like, see, Blair Witch Project would have been like ninety nine, ninety eight. They said a remake of that though. But I tell you what, the the hype surrounding the first one when it came out to the theaters that first weekend was huge. Like there's been a lot of like those mockumentary style movies now. But at the time, that was it. That was the only one. People just weren't ready for it. I mean, I shouldn't say that. Because this is Spinal Tap was out before that, and that was a mockumentary. But people knew that that was. I think people probably knew Blair Witch was afraid was fake too. But the internet wasn't like it was today. <sighs> nice cran raspberry flavored sparkling water. Some LaCroix. It's pretty good. You either like it or you don't. I'll say that much. Actually, I won't even say that. You either you either tolerate tolerate it or you dislike it. And then eventually if you tolerate it long enough, you start to like it. You might say, But Ryan, why bother to drink something you have to grow to like? Well, there's no sugar. It sort of has a like a sprite sort of I don't want to say texture because water really doesn't have texture but sort of a sprite feel to it oh man I almost missed this hook set on that one too oh come on unless you're my personal best I don't, at this point we just going to catch it it's pretty good 15, 39 inches. I wonder what my personal best is. Let's find out. Uh, where would it be? Here? Fish records. Flathead. What? May 14th? <laughs> that wasn't that long ago. I'm really confused. Oh well. So that was... So was I really just in North Carolina like two weeks ago? I tell you what. Because that was, that was Texas. Or that was Florida when we lost all that money. You guys got to keep me honest. I have no idea I guess. 
I don't rem I don't remember coming here at all. I have zero recollection. I, I mean, I kind of like I said when I we came over here last week. I kind of remembered that wooden bridge, but. I don't know. Maybe you guys have all corrected me in the comments by now, but that's crazy to me. I forget how much it even was. Was it 20 pounds? Must have been. Movie, movies from late 90s, early 2000s, let's see. you think those would be easy, because actually I spent the, <laughs> I spent the late 90s, early 2000s working in a video store, in a VHS store. It was a good time. All my friends would come up, hang out, watch movies on a very small TV behind the counter. I do mean very small TV. My, uh, my boss was not a fan. She, thought, just thought, she always thought there was other stuff we could do, but seriously, there was only seven shelves in the whole entire store. Seven shelves in the whole entire store. No, that's the tricks. They were front to back, I guess. So 14, and then he wrapped around the outside. But you clean the whole store in half a shift. Even sooner if you, you got started. I actually built, I took, um, see the VHS cases used to come in these big hard plastic clear cases. I took two of them that were chipped and cut them in half so I just had their lids. And then I used two rulers and a yardstick and I built basically this jig that I could slide under, <laughs> slide under all the movie boxes on the, on the shelf. And then raise like nine of them at a time. Then you'd, you know, dust underneath the movie boxes. And then you'd set them back down. You wouldn't have to take them off and get them out of order. Keep them in order and all that. Just the dust right underneath them. And then you just have to go through and pull the movie boxes back out. But it was a... Uh, my 16-year-old uh, self is fairly ingenious about that. That's why I, I, I that's, I'm, can't call me lazy. I'm just efficient. Unless you're my wife. My wife can call me lazy, I guess. But Got one more cut bait here. We're already up to 45 pounds. Excuse me. Oh. Didn't mean for that to... There are a couple movie boxes that will always sort of stick into my mind. Most of them from the horror section, actually. See, so there's the Rainbow and the Serpent. I remember that movie box. Phantasm. I remember those movie boxes. Uh, there were some over in the adventure section, too, like uh, Romance the Stone. Is that what it's called? Romancing the Stone? Something like that. Let's reel it in and try again. What else? Um, for some reason, was it three to tango? Or was it three to tango? It was like Nev Campbell, Matthew Perry, and what was that other guy's name? Dylan McDermott? Is that right? For some reason, I remember that movie cover. Sort of beige, the three of them in the middle with the words at the top. Beige at the top again. Probably 
probably about the third or fourth year I worked there, I was like, I'm going to watch every movie in here. And I just sort of started at one end and was, was working my way through. I didn't make it very far. I have a lot of memories up there. It's a good time. I hope my kids have jobs like that. Jobs they get to sort of grow into and own. It's a good time. We're going to buy it again. Rebate it. Let's see, what all jobs did I have when I was a kid? Earliest job I had was I split a paper route with my cousin. Actually, I think he did it mostly. I just did it when he couldn't. Um, actually, he may have had it all. I can't. Quite, I remember doing it a couple times, but uh, I mean, it was mostly his. And then let's see. After that, after that, I started working at the concession stand when I was probably like twelve. Summer, I was either twelve or thirteen. I worked the concession stand at baseball diamond. You get paid. Every night, or when you would work, and you'd all fight for hours, try to get as many hours as we could, and uh, found out that I could get paid more if I learned how to keep book. Or I don't mean like a bookie; I mean like just like keep the score book. Uh, so I uh, started to do that, and then uh, the biggest responsibility you had keeping book was uh, you had to pay the umpires. And then you had to drop off the stats at the har at the news times at our newspaper, which meant you had to write it all out. You know, so and so had went two for three and uh, hit two doubles and whatever. You know, team won so and so. And then they'd always want you to write a little blurb at the end that they could put in theirs. Mine were always so bad they were they'd be rewritten. But I did that. For probably two summers, I saved up enough. I remember that I, I had a windsock in my bedroom, an old fish windsock. I saved up enough to uh, buy a GT mountain bike, an out, Outpost Trail. It's a bike I still have today, actually. Um, and that was close to four hundred bucks. Saved it over the course of a couple of summers working at the baseball diamond. Um, I think my older brother stole some of the money at one point. Uh, yeah, he stole some of the money and he stole my le leather jacket I got for Christmas. It made me look awesome, like a baller. Um, but no, then I bought the bike. Then I used the bike to get back and forth to work. And then at 15, I got hired to work at the video store. I applied and worked at the video store. And I did that until I was, I did that through the rest of high school. And then I uh, went to college at the college nearby. So I stayed stayed at the video store and worked. That was my college job too. Wasn't as fun as probably having an actual college job with other college people, but it was still a good time. Um, there were enough of my friends left still in, in my hometown that it was it was work. It was it was uh, it made it work. As you can see, my advanced license is about to expire. I believe 30 minutes is when it, you get that warning, so. It might be worth buying another one, but maybe it won't be. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. But I uh, ended up working there for a while. At the, at the same time we were doing that, uh, my brother and I was doing a little mowing business. Uh, him and his friend had started it, and then... Um, I, I would sort of, I'd work for them, I guess. It's a good time. 
They mowed through a lot of cable lines. Well, they weed whacked a lot of cable connections before they got that figured out. And then, let's see, then I got a job. I, I was going to school, had a job at the, uh, at, the at a youth at risk treatment center, youth at risk treatment center, at risk youth treatment center. Get my adjectives in the right order there. Um, did that for a while. Did that for about 10 years. Ended up deciding that that's where I needed to be, so I uh, quit school my junior year. And worked there, went to work there full time. The video store uh, uh, was closing. Couldn't give me the hours I wanted anyway, so they, uh, I stepped away from that. Then they later closed. But, uh, it was a good time. A couple times uh, when I was working at that video store, that we'd, we'd have to like paint the lines in the parking lot or. Uh, the, actually, the the my first my the first day of my college, like I was starting college, like on Monday. Uh, that night, Sunday night, uh, I stayed up at the video store with my with the owner and the boss, and we painted all the walls on the inside after after the shift at ten. We were there till probably like three or four in the morning, and then I left, went home and slept for a few hours, and showed up for my freshman day of college. Uh, I always thought that that was, I was really tired, and for having such a big day, like didn't work. I had a had a truck at the time, so I would drive my truck out to the commuter lot, which was like a mile away from where the campus was. Throw the bike that I bought from the manning at the 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 uh, working concessions at the little league. Throw that in the bed of the truck, and then I would. So I'd drive my truck and with the bike in the bed out to the commuter lot, park the truck, get on the bike, ride the bike into into school. And I did that all the way up through October, which point I ripped my ankle in half again. Another basketball injury, playing with my uh, brother and some friends at the park. Then I was on crutches and a walking boot for the rest of the first semester, which uh, for a commuter student, who normally had to park a mile away and ride his bike, uh, getting a, uh, what you want to call it, a handicap pass in the middle of the winter was like instant friends. Because <laughs> you just tell your friends that we're here and walk home. Hey, uh, my car's actually right there. We can see it from the front door. Or my truck. Can we just drive it by your house? Drive by your dorm? Drive by your apartment? It's a good time. It was a good icebreaker when it was icy outside. I don't know. There was an alliteration there that I couldn't quite put together. I don't know. I don't really know why. I don't know why I spent this whole entire episode talking about that stuff. There we go. We got a fish. We got a fish. We got a fish. Come on, take it. Take it. Take it. Thank you. Thank you for taking it. Big guy. There we go. Keep. I think with that, we're going to call it an episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, sorry I was rambling about, uh, sound like an old man, but, uh, rambled on and on and on about the good old days i do appreciate you uh checking out the video if you like what you saw uh that's a lot of catfish i mean we're gonna get what 70 more than 75 pounds worth of catfish you just witnessed so if you, if you like what you saw make sure you hit that like button if you want to be notified when these videos go live become a member of the lodge yourself then i do subscribe to the buffalo brotherhood by hitting that red subscribe button a little bell beside it will get you notifications right on your desktop or on your phone let you know exactly when these videos go live which is monday wednesday friday and saturday at about 12.30 if things go, if things are working perfectly. Uh, but new videos up on the Brotherhood channel every day. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.